the economy is already contracting. If you look at the data that we got, or are close to contracting, if you look at the data we got at the end of last year and the economic data that we've got this year, you can see a sharp deceleration as the air is coming out of the bubble. But what's really going to cause this recession is inflation, because inflation is going to drive the cost of living up so high that Americans are going to be spending a very high percentage of their disposable income on the basic necessities, food, energy, rent, insurance, health care. They're not going to have money left over for discretionary spending. And that means the people who earn a living in the part of the economy that benefits from that discretionary spending, they're going to be unemployed. And in fact, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be joining the ranks of the unemployed who over the last year or two didn't work because they made a lot of money in meme stocks or cryptocurrencies. And as their paper fortunes blow up, a lot of these millennials are going to realize that they actually have to get a job, that they can't live off of their, their trading prowess. They're not the geniuses that they thought they were. Uh, they're going to be looking for jobs. And in fact, a lot of retirees who never who thought they would never work again they're going to be back in the workforce because inflation is going to decimate the value of their portfolios you know at least workers you know you can get a wage that will increase it probably won't increase as much as prices so you're still going to fall behind your real wages are going to go down even if you get a nominal a raise but if you are uh, retired and you're living on a fixed income that fixed income is going to be obliterated by inflation. And now what are you going to do? You no longer have the ability uh, to put food on the table or pay the electric bill based on your retirement income. You've got to go back into the workforce. And until you find a job, well, you're unemployed. And so I think unemployment's going to spike up. We're going into a recession. And there's nothing the government could do about it. There's nothing the Federal Reserve could do about it. Because what they normally do to stimulate a recession is they create more inflation. They print more money. Well, how can they do that if you're already having an inflation problem simultaneously to your recession? How can you try to cure the recession by making inflation worse? And if the reason for the recession is inflation and you deliberately make inflation worse to try to stimulate the economy, you're actually going to sedate the economy. You're going to make the recession that you're trying to cure even worse uh, with uh, with. with with, with your, your monetary cure that doesn't work. So we're really at the end of the rope for the Fed. I mean, they've been kicking the can down the road uh, for over a decade. They've been papering over every recession, every stock market decline by creating inflation and hiding behind the guise of the fact that, hey, inflation is under 2%, so we could do all this. And they kept saying all the time, if inflation ever gets above 2%, well, we've got the tools, we'll do something about it. And I was saying the whole time, they don't really have the tools. Maybe they have them, but they'll never use them because they would completely obliterate the bubble economy that they spent all of these years inflating. So it was all a bluff. It was all bark and no bite when it came to inflation fighting. In fact, the Fed was trying to carry a big stick or the, the Fed was pretending it had a big stick by talking tough, knowing that it had no stick at all, because it is impossible when you have an economy that is so levered up, and the only way to cure inflation is to force a deleveraging, is to raise interest rates and shrink the money supply, given how much debt we already have, it's impossible. And the reason the economy is so loaded up with debt is because of the monetary policies pursued by the Fed. So the crisis that we're going to have, just like the financial crisis of 08, was completely manufactured by the Federal Reserve. It was bad monetary policy that inflated this bubble, and it's bad monetary policy as it deflates that's going to make the situation much, much worse. But for investors, the path is clear. You've got to get out of U.S. stocks and out of U.S. bonds in particular. You've got to get out of the dollar and you need to be in inflation hedge investments. One obviously being gold and silver. Gold prices, as I'm speaking, are around $1,850 an ounce. We're still below the highs from last year, which were about 2,100. Gold has been consolidating 
one of the reasons that gold hasn't gone up is because everybody has expected the Fed to successfully fight off inflation with a tighter monetary policy. Again, monetary policy will be less loose, but that's not enough to win a battle with inflation. It may be enough to prick the bubble in tech stocks, but it's not going to derail this inflation juggernaut. And when people realize that, they are going to be piling in to gold and silver. Prices are going to go up dramatically. I think we're going to have another leg similar to the leg we had from 2001 to 2011, where gold was up about 5x. It could easily happen again. And that means the money that's going to be made in the mining sector is going to be even bigger. That's where your speculative funds should be invested. Forget about tech stocks. They're old news. They worked in the past. They're not going to work in the future. What's going to work is what worked in the 1970s, the last time we had stagflation. Of course, this time it's going to be far worse. The inflation is going to be much worse. The economy is going to be much weaker. And unfortunately, we won't be able to put a stop to it like we did in 1980 because we have no ability to raise interest rates because the country is completely insolvent, which was not the case in 1980 when we were still a wealthy creditor nation, we still had trade surpluses, we had relatively small debt relative to GDP, the mirror image of America today. So we're not gonna have a, a ending, a positive ending, like the one we had with Volcker and Reagan. We're gonna have something completely different and catastrophic. And so it's even more important that you uh, stagflation proof your portfolio because it might end up being an inflationary depression not just a recession, but a depression, and the inflation could end up being hyperinflation. And so you also want to get into foreign equities. I think that should be the bulk of a portfolio, good dividend paying foreign equities. Those, a portfolio like that in early 1970, if you divested of the US stock market and you got into German stocks, you got into Japanese stocks, you did great during the 19. Uh, 70s, as people who stayed wedded to the U.S. stock market got killed, and they got killed even more if they stayed in the U.S. bond market. So you need to follow that blueprint. I mean, most investors today weren't even investing back then. They have no idea how to do anything differently from what they've been doing. And I think most investors have no idea what's already happening. They haven't even looked beneath the surface of what's happening during this market meltdown to realize the huge rotation that is taking place, that there are stocks that are making 52-week highs uh, uh, in sectors that no one has been buying in years uh, because everybody wanted momentum. Well, now the momentum is down and it's a race to get out, but a lot of people won't even realize what's happened. They've been conditioned to buy the dip and it doesn't matter to them if the market goes down, their confidence is gonna go up, whether you're talking about, you know, overpriced tech stocks or, or cryptocurrencies. Everybody thinks that every sell-off is going to be followed by a move up to new highs. And so they're complacent, they're not worried, and they're going to get obliterated. But what the smart investor has to do is recognize that the day of reckoning is here. A lot of people you know, don't understand that because they had no idea that there was a problem to reckon with. Just like so many people were surprised by the financial crisis of 2008, I wasn't surprised. I had been expecting it for years. It finally happened. This next crisis is going to be much worse. Again, the same people that were blindsided by the financial crisis of 2008 have no idea that this even larger crisis is around the corner. I do. I've been expecting it for years. The, the one thing that surprises me is not that we're here, but that it's taken us so long to get here. And the bigger problem is because we succeeded in kicking the can down the road for so long, all of the problems that are going to create this crisis are now much bigger. And therefore, the ensuing crisis is going to be far worse than what we would have experienced had we experienced it sooner, which means the stakes for investors are that much higher. 